the difference between terms like brand, branding, brand identity? If you answered yes, you're not alone. The fact is that those terms get thrown around a lot nowadays and many entrepreneurs and creatives often get confused when they hear them and think they mean the same thing, but the reality is there's a difference between them. You see, when it comes to a brand, this is something that everybody has. If you, if you have an online presence, you have a brand. There is no denying that. Even if you want to deny it, you really can't. Here's the thing about a brand. Brand is not something you control. Not really. You may think you do, but you don't. Because in an essence, brand is what people say about you behind your back. Uh, I don't know who said this, but it was a very wise person who was right on the money with that. Brand is how your ideal customers perceive you when they interact with your business, when they purchase your products, when they are receiving on the receiving end of your services. They, it's, it's how they feel when they go through your email sequence, how they feel when they interact with uh, whoever, whomever is working for you, if you have team members. It's how they feel when they're working with you. It's an emotion in an essence, and uh, it's also how they describe you and your business to their friends and family, basically when you're not present, so behind your back. Because of this, you don't really have a direct control over what they do, what they feel, what they experience, and how they perceive you as a brand, whether in a good light or in a bad light. You can influence it, or you can sort of shape their perception of your business through your brand identity, which is basically a set of visual assets such as your logo, your color scheme, your fonts, the social media graphics, how your website looks, the way your flyers look, the way your business cards look, also how you sound on social media, so the tone of your voice, the, the voice that you use in your emails, in your client, in your client customer facing materials such as logos, product descriptions, brochures, flyers, emails, messages, direct response on a hotline, for example, that is a brand identity. And you can, you can create a brand identity that would appeal to your ideal customer so that you can attract them. But in the long run, the brand itself is not really something that you have a control of. And finally, uh, the last term that I want to discuss is branding, which is basically the process of creating your brand identity, but it is also the ever evolving process and growth of your brand itself. So how your brand develops over time, because let's face it, brand is actually a living, breathing entity, if you will. Uh, I mean, we know it's not breathing, but I do equate it to a separate being in and of itself that develops and grows over time, just like you develop and grow over time. And this is even more true if you're creating a personal brand because you change and evolve and grow over time. So it's only natural that your brand develops and grows and evolves over time as well. Now, when it comes to all of this, people often ask me, well, do I need a brand to get started? And my answer is yes, you do. And here's why. People most often confuse a brand with a logo or with a brand identity. So with the color scheme, with fonts, with all of that. Do you need your brand identity to get started? Not necessarily. No, you don't have to have developed an entire full-blown color palette or have a dedicated three or four or more fonts. But that's for another post and for another video. But no, you don't necessarily need that. All you need to get started is basically defi defining your emotion or the emotion that you want your customers to feel. How do you want them to feel when they interact with your business, with whatever it is that you're offering them, be that products, be that services, be that something else. So all you, you do need a brain because if you don't have a brand, you're not going to have anything else because people most often buy based on their emotional response. So if they see something and they really want it and they feel an emotional connection to something, they're going to buy. If there's no emotional connection, they're just going to walk away. That's the sad truth. And in order to get that emotional response, you need a brand. So yes, you do need it. Do you need a brand identity? No, you don't. You can evolve that over time if you don't feel confident enough to do that. Or if you don't, if you're on a tight budget and you don't have the money to invest in a blown branding service with a designer. Another question that I often get from my clients or from people who are interested in uh, hiring a brand designer is, can I DIY my brand and still look professional? And the answer is again, yes, you can. Now, I understand that 
uh, not all of us were born with design skills or have the budget to hire a branding expert right from the start. So if you are on that path and you want to DIY your brain, here are a few tips that will help you. First, define your mission and your vision because without that, you won't be able to define the emotion that I was talking about earlier. You have to get clear on what you do, who you do it for, and how do you do it. And from there, develop a statement that'll help you describe how you want your customers to feel when they interact with you. What is the impression that you want to leave on them? And from there, you'll have a nice starting point that will be enough to get you started as a brand. Next, uh, when developing your logo, my advice is stick to a text-based logo. First, it's hard to get wrong because the design job is taken care of for you by the font itself. So all you have to do is find a font that really matches with the vibe you're trying to connect, uh, convey. So all you really have to do is find a font that matches the vibe that you're trying to convey. For example, if your primary target audience is children, you're not going to pick an elegant script font. If your primary target audience is men, again, you're not really going to pick something that's playful, youthful, or, you know, something that would be better suited for a female audience. So based on that, look at the font that matches, that you feel matches with what you're trying to convey with your brain and go for that. When it comes to colors, pick just one color. That's all you really need because you'll have white for the background of your website or any other marketing material. You'll have black for the text and then pick one color. One color that, that will serve as an action color that will be used for buttons, for links, and stuff that you need to bring your attention to. Now, later on, as you get more confident with it, that, that color that you've used on the, font, on the buttons and on the links will start to be associated with your brand. So you can pick it as your iconic brand color. And then all you have to do is find a color that's, that matches with that color that will become your action color. So that's really all you need to get started with your brain. And lastly, no matter what you do or how you approach your brain, and finally, no matter what you do, make sure to be consistent because consistency will help you build that brain recognition. And then people will slowly start to recognize and associate certain graphics uh, with you, posts on social media feeds and messages that come through. They will start to associate that with your brain. So no matter what you do, stick to that font you've chosen, stick to that color you've chosen, and you'll be golden. If you need a little help DIYing your brain, head on over to brandedbossbabe.com, take my free brain personality quiz, and learn how to attract your ideal customers. I'll see you next time.